Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 23rd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Just a quick reminder uh, to be careful that you patch various tools your developers are using. Don't have any st- real numbers for that, but at least it feels like we are seeing sort of an increase in attacks against developer uh, tools in particular over the last few months. Today, I wrote up a scan that's trying to fingerprint vulnerable Confluence servers. Confluence is sort of a wiki-like uh, collaboration system that's part of the Atlassian uh, suite of uh, tools. And uh, we saw one particular IP address that basically was uh, looking for a set of uh, URLs that could be used uh, to exploit CVE 2021-26084. This is an OGNL injection vulnerability that leads to arbitrary code execution. It's an older vulnerability, but of course, no telling if there are some uh, vulnerable servers still out there. The test, the fingerprint they're sort of doing is quite simple, and it's part of actually a widely distributed uh, exploit a tool for this vulnerability. It just tries to sort of solve a little math problem. If the correct answer comes back, then of course the attacker knows that your server is vulnerable. Let me have a little bit of an odd thing happening here with Apple uh, security advisories. Uh, two of the advisories released in January, one for iPadOS and iOS, and then the second one for macOS. They both sort of received a silent update by adding uh, three more vulnerabilities uh, to these advisories. What this really means is that uh, these uh, vulnerabilities were fixed back in January, but are just now being made public. Two of the advisories affect a foundation and essentially our sandbox escape uh, vulnerability, so privilege as elevation uh, vulnerabilities. The third one is a vulnerability in crash reporter and it's a race condition that allows a user to read arbitrary files as root. When you're looking at the advisory, it still says that the advisory was released January 23rd, but then for the new vulnerabilities, there's sort of a little uh, line saying that the entry was added February 20th. The reason for this update is a post by Trellix yesterday explaining these vulnerabilities in details and how they uh, could be used essentially uh, to break some of uh, the security architecture of iOS and macOS and essentially lead to a sandbox escape. In particular, uh, these bugs could be used to bypass some of the added protection that Apple implemented in response to the Pegasus uh, toolkit that was uh, used by the NSO group. So nothing you need to do given that the patch was released exactly a month ago. The most commonly used two-factor authentication system is often called, well, a Google Authenticator because Google kind of popularized it uh, with its mobile authenticator app. Since then, other companies have sort of jumped on the bandwagon and offered uh, apps that do support this style of authentication, but apparently not all of them are really doing it sort of for the best uh, purposes. Software company Misc uh, did uh, now release uh, some work on Twitter where they looked into some of the more shady applications that offer a two-factor authentication in Apple's App Store And one, for example, they point out here, which actually even is actively advertising on Apple's App Store, is not only sending the QR codes it's collecting to uh, Google Analytics. This may be an oversight. This may just be sort of sloppy coding. But uh, they also uh, do sell a subscription uh, for uh, their uh, application, which again, usually these applications are free. They are not really all that complex. And the subscriptions being offered here is going for about $4 a week. So at the very least, this could be considered a fleeceware, but uh, overall, I would stay away from any application like this. If you are dealing with authentication, stick with a vendor that you trust. And of course, many uh, Decent uh, password uh, safe applications do already sort of provide this functionality. 
And in noteworthy advisories, we do have a critical advisory by VMware for its Carbon Black app control. The update does address an injection vulnerability with a CVSS score of 9.1, CVE 2023-2858. And in order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker would need to have access to the admin console. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.